In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I know that many of you may have memorized this part from the Bible, Matthew 25, verse 31 to 45, and, in, and others have at least know it. But I feel that this part will shine on the last day, because even if it is very simple, it is the first measurement for entering heaven. Let's imagine when Jesus comes with the angels and saints around him on the last day. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, this is verse 31, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. You know, this is a scene, a magnificent scene, because we are not experts. We cannot divide sheep from the goats. But the shepherd can know the difference with just a glance. Verse 33, And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Let me ask you, did anyone notice a repeated theme in this text? The types of services were the sick, the words were sick, hungry, and in prison, and these were repeated several times. Why did Jesus do that? Of course, this method of teaching is suitable for simple people. It is in three parts. The first part is explaining what good people do. The second part is explaining what bad people did not do. The last part is about the consequences. This method of repeating the story suits children and simple people. But why did he repeat these words several times? Hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, and in prison. Because this is what God wants us to pay attention to. You should remember this story when you see a sick person because he repeated the word sick three times. Repentance is important to remind us to pay attention. They are the keys to heaven. When you find a hungry man, he is a key to heaven. When you find someone thirsty, he is a key to heaven. When you know that someone is in prison, he is a key to heaven. You have a keychain to heaven, but you still do not want to hold it and use it to open heaven for yourself. So, is mercy enough without faith and sacraments? We learned from the Holy Fathers that we should not take one part in the Bible and ignore the rest. Jesus here did not focus on faith and redemption. Here he focused on acting according to love. Your actions, as a person who loves God, should include mercy. Faith is not dismissed in this part. These people were already believers, for the Lord said, Come, you blessed of my Father. Do not think that a person will go to heaven if he just does good merciful deeds and he isn't baptized or he doesn't repent or he doesn't eat the Holy Communion and the sacrament of the Eucharist or he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. Such a person will not go to heaven. Merciful deeds do not cancel out the other requirements for heaven. Mercy is the natural act for you if you have faith and you love God. It does not abrogate the other things. What confirms this is the parable of the wise virgins, which is at the beginning of this chapter. 
This entire chapter is read on Tuesday during the Holy Week, the Passion Week. Jesus told these parables during his last week before his crucifixion. He started with the parable of wise virgins, then the parable of the talents, and then he concluded with this parable. In the parable of the virgins, the main idea is waiting for the bridegroom, waiting for the last day. The bridegroom is Christ, so it had the idea of faith in Christ. It talked about perseverance in prayer and the saving oil, that is, the Holy Spirit. Then the parable of the talents is talking about your service and your mission in life. Did you trade with your talents or not? So do not take the concept of merciful actions and neglect the other concepts. Another way to say this is that when someone is baptized and the Holy Spirit dwells in him, the Holy Spirit yields love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. It is natural for a Christian person to love. He automatically cares and empathizes with people, as a child does. And it is normal that a person who is not close to God will neglect people and their needs. When you pray more, you will find yourself more merciful. If someone is having communion every week but does not have mercy, he doesn't understand what he's doing. In this case, the priest has made a mistake, of course, because the person took communion unworthily. But if he prays and is repentant, he will leave the divine liturgy wanting to give and love all people.